Thank you, Alex. Um, good afternoon, everyone. It, it's 3 p.m. on the East Coast, so we are going to go ahead and get started. This is the second um, assessment coordinator training for, for the fall uh, main three-year assessment program. Um, I'm going to first kick it off to um, Krista, let her introduce herself, and then we'll introduce the NWA staff, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Hi, everyone. I'm Krista Averill. I'm the assessment coordinator at the main DOE for the main three-year assessment, as well as the main science assessment. Alex? All right. Hey, everyone. I'm Alex Luisi. I'm a senior solution delivery consultant, and I'll be helping cover a bulk of the presentation today. Um, Mindy Stoby is also on the line. She's a NWA program manager, and I am Fred Valenzuela. I'm the NWA senior program manager. Um, again, first off, thank you so much for, for your time this afternoon. We've got a lot of information to share with you um, concerning the upcoming um, assessment window. Um, and we do just want to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, there is a Q&A feature in the bottom, across the bottom of your of the bar. Um, so along the way, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in there. And um, we'll probably stop the presentation a few times as we go through to address any questions um, that, that anybody may have. And then we'll also have plenty of time on the back end to address, uh, you know, have a longer uh, Q&A period at the very end. So um, again, we've got so much to cover. Um, these are just some of the top, these are all the topics that, that at a high level that we're gonna be covering with you. Obviously an overview of the assessment. We're gonna talk about technology readiness, um, assessment management in Acacia, accessibility, not tested codes, preparing and monitoring the assessment, um, regional and out-of-state programs. We're also going to cover um, the proctor and student experience, um, the operational reports that can kind of help you monitor testing uh, while testing is going on. We'll talk about data and reporting. And then at the end, we'll talk about preparation, um, some tips, some resources, um, communication, whether that you need to communicate with the DOE or, or NWA partner support. And then again, at the very end, we'll have, we'll have plenty of time for, for Q&A. All right, so let's get into an overview of, of the main three-year assessment. Um, similar to spring 23, um, it's going to be the same content areas and, and grades that, that are going to be assessed. So we're looking at math and reading. Um, and again, it's going to be for your 338 students as well as your second year of high school. Um, the modes of delivery, obviously, we're going to have online, but we're also going to have um, paper-based accommodated forms. So you're going to we're going to have standard paper, which will be which will be print on demand. Um, and obviously, if your students need Braille or large print, that'll be a formal order. Um, and then we'll end up producing those materials and, and shipping them to your schools. Um, the bottom left is just the administration windows for fall, winter, and spring. And like last school year, the winter administration will be optional. Um, and then in the bottom right, um, these are the scores. So out of your fall and winter administrations, you will be receiving your RIT scores, um, similar like as if you were assessing map growth. Um, and then the spring administration, you'll have your main specific scale score and your RIT score. So again, the, the, you'll get double duty out of, out of your spring admin. Uh, so these are, let me move this out of the way real quick. Um, so these are your testing time and scheduling recommendations for fall and winter. So we're really looking at roughly an hour to take the test. Um, again, you, you got both reading and math. Math, the number of questions are a little bit higher. You're at 42, whereas the reading assessments is, is 36. Um, with it only being an hour, um, SAUs and schools have flexibility in, in scheduling the assessment. Obviously, the student, um, the student needs should be prioritized when developing your assessment schedule. Um, assessment can be can be worked over multiple days if needed, and the assessment is on time. So obviously the proctors do not need to pace um, their students. All right, um, this is the time, the testing time, and the schedule recommendations that were based on um, spring twenty three empirical data. Um, so you can see for three through five, you know, the test was anywhere from two to two and a half hours, taking two to four sessions, um, math and reading for grades six through eight, again, probably around that two hour time period um, with one or two sessions needed. Um, and then your second year of high school, about one and a half hours um, with just one session that those that 
the students needed to complete the test. All students in the same grade and given the same assessment will have the same number of items um, that they will be taking. Um, again, those testing times and, and scheduling, those, those are just recommendations. Um, that estimated testing time does not include printing and distribution of the test tickets, you know, launching the secure browser, the student logging in. Um, obviously, when the student is, is they may need to pause. Um, they, they can pause out their assessment just by logging out. And obviously, the system will automatically log them out if, if the system sees that there's roughly 15 minutes of inactivity. Um, should they get logged out, the proctor does not, is, there's, the proctor does not need to do anything um, to help the student resume the test. The student would just need to log back into the system with the same um, test ticket information that they signed in with originally. Uh, we do have a student tutorial out there. Um, it's an interactive video for the main three-year assessment um, that's available to students to learn how to use um, the online assessment platform. Um, to kind of give the students how you know how to use the online tools, how to nav navigate through the assessment platform, how to respond to different item types, and um, some tips for taking for taking the assessment. And in the bottom, of, we've we've shared a link with you to um, so you can get to easily access the main through your uh, student tutorial. We also had a, an item type sampler. Um, this is a some people call it a sampler, some people call it a practice assessment, but it's in essence just to give the students the opportunity to practice with the platform, gain, gain familiarity with the item types that they're going to experience. Um, it's accessible by the by the NWA assessment portal, the main DOE webpage, or a link it, which is in the secure browser. Um, paper item type samplers can be provided um, as long as a, as long as a, along with the answer key. Um, this is also a great way for the students to ensure that the devices meet all the system requirements before um, day one of the assessment. And then again, at the very bottom is a link to um, the online item sampler. And then if you're going to take the item sampler online, this is just what, what the screen is going to look like. So on the left, um, you would see the main through year assessment. And then underneath that will be the item type sampler. That's what you would choose, obviously, if you want to take the item type sampler. Um, and then the next screen that's going to pop up is going to ask you for the year, the grade, the subject area, and whether or not you need an accommodation. Um, please make sure that you select fall 23 uh, when you go out there um, when you're going to when you're going to use the, the item type sampler. And now before we hand it off to Alex to start the technology readiness section, are there any questions that we can answer? There are no questions in the Q&A. Oh, wonderful. All righty. It's all yours, Alex. All right, great. I'll take over from here. So yeah, so um, we want to start off talking about technology readiness, go over what devices are supported, what operating system version, and talk about the application that is needed on student devices so that they can log in and take the main through your assessment. So we'll jump right in here. So we do wanna mention that there is a separate application for the main through your assessment. If you've administered the assessment back in spring or previously, there it is the same application, but it is a different app than the map growth application. So we'll show a little bit of differences here in a moment. But when you do install the State Solutions Secure Browser for the main through your assessment, it's going to ask you to enter a partner code. That partner code is just ME, like main. There are options to install it using MDM software so that you're able to push the application out over the network to your devices, such as like Chromebooks or Mac computers or iPads. And we'll touch upon that. They can also be installed individually on your devices if that's easier for you. We do always recommend as well is to just turn off any automatic updates during active testing, just to make sure uh, student devices don't get updated to a new version that is not yet supported. Something else we want to make sure is noted is that the previous version of the State Solution Secure Browser does need to be uninstalled before the new version can be installed. And um, we have instructions on how to uninstall that in bulk as well, so that you can save some time and you're not having to do that across each device. And then just also note that the Map Growth Secure Browser, it's a different app. 
that one would not need to be uninstalled or reinstalled for the three-year assessment. Okay, so as far as devices that are supported, so same types of devices as before are supported. So Mac computers, Windows computers, and then Chromebooks and iPads. Um, the State Solution Secure Browser, you'll see the two icons here along the right. So the one on the left, the blue icon is the State Solution Secure Browser used for the main three-year assessment. And then you may be familiar with the Map Growth Browser on the right with the gray and yellow. So just keep that in mind. They are two separate applications and you would need the blue one for the three-year assessment. And we also do want to mention for any SAUs or anyone using Chromebooks, if you have Chromebooks that are not managed, uh, the secure browser is not supported. So you do have to have managed Chromebooks, and there is an option to go in through Google Admin Console to go in and install and push that out across the network. As far as how to do all of these, the specific instructions are in our State Solutions System and Technology Guide linked here at the bottom. Krista did also put a link in the chat to the PDF version of these slides where you can go in and click on the links. So definitely um, take a moment to grab that and save that. And then that'll be a great way to access all these resources we're sharing. We also wanna talk about system requirements for staff and teacher devices. So there's no application that's needed um, for proctors or for staff. You just use a standard web browser and log in. You just wanna make sure you're using one of these supported browsers here. We do support most of the common browsers, um, and we recommend you be on the latest version. And then just keep in mind, Internet, Internet Explorer is no longer supported, but Microsoft Edge is available if you prefer using a Microsoft browser. All right, now for some more specifics on um, which OSs are supported. So for Windows, Windows 10 and Windows 11 are supported. For Mac, there have been some changes. So Windows 11, or sorry, Mac OS 11 is going to be supported through this fall administration, but then from winter moving forward, 11 will no longer be supported. Um, and then 12 and 13 are supported. For Chromebook, we recommend everyone keep their Chromebooks up to date on the official release channel. So not that beta channel or that kind of preview of seeing future builds. We wanna make sure everyone is using that release channel. So the current version and the previous five versions are supported. And then for iPads, iOS 15 and 16 are the ones that are supported and 14 is no longer supported. I do wanna mention for some of these older OSs like on, on Mac, um, we don't block the previous versions from working. So if you don't have any way to update, you may still be able to use it, but we definitely highly recommend updating to one of these supported versions, um, just to make sure that students have a consistent experience. So please uh, update all of your devices to one of the supported versions. And then as we mentioned before, we've got the system and technology guide available here, and then also a system requirements guide. It's a lot shorter just going over these specific requirements. All right, and then um, to touch upon that, these guides. So there's a lot of great information on these guides. So the System and Technology Guide is a comprehensive one, which covers everything. Uh, it'll give you information on IT readiness, any network or system requirements, so how much bandwidth is needed. The installation instructions, so including how to install using MDM software to push it out over the network to kind of save you some time so you're not having to use um, installing each device. And then also uh, what URLs and IPs you may need to add to your allow lists to make sure that you're Firewall and security is not going to be blocking any websites needed for the assessment. We've also got our online readiness check website. This is a great way to see um, if your devices meet those system requirements. This is actually where you can download the secure browser for Windows and Mac. And there are other resources there we'll show in a moment. And then actually when you launch the secure browser on a student's device, it'll go through a check as it's launching. So it'll let you know if anything doesn't meet the requirements or if there's any settings you might need to change. So that online readiness checker page we mentioned is right here. So you'll see along the left, there's a system requirements guide with that yellow button. So you can just confirm which OSs and devices are supported. Below that is the actual download links. So this is where you'll download the installer file for Windows and for Mac. For Mac MDM software to manage over the network, there's also a config file you can use. And then for iOS and Chrome, you would really just go into the App Store on those devices or again through that MDM software or Google Console to manage that over the network for your devices. And then on the right, we have a school capacity calculator. 
This can be pretty handy to try to calculate how many students you can test at once. It'll help factor in bandwidth. You can enter in information on how many devices you're planning to use and um, how many test sessions you want to have per day for it to help you calculate that. And then a little further um, off the screen, there's also a speed test here. So this is a good way to just get an estimate of what your bandwidth currently is when you check the website so you can help to plan for that. And then here along the bottom, we have a link right to this readiness checker page. So we also want to mention that um, every so often we do take our systems offline for maintenance. Uh, we always try to schedule these over the weekend to try to not interrupt any active testing. We do have a maintenance calendar available on our public site that's at the link below. So this is a great way to go in and double check when things may be down um, for our scheduled maintenance once again over the weekend to try to prevent any interruptions. And then once more, just a reminder to turn off any automatic updates on student devices during the active test window, just to keep things moving smoothly. All right, so I do wanna take a moment before we move to the next section and see if we have any other questions that came through. Yeah, Alex, we have a few variations on the same question. So just making sure um, that everyone has the opportunity to hear it verbally as well. So just to confirm the State Solutions Browser, that was installed last spring does need to be uninstalled and the new browser reinstalled this fall. Correct. Thank you. All right. And that would be for all devices, correct? Including Chromebooks? That's right. Thank you. All right, so then we'll move forward. So next up, we wanna talk about assessment management in Acacia, which is the platform that through your assessment is delivered on. So just to kind of uh, make sure everyone's on the same page, we've got a few different terms we want to get everyone familiar with. So Acacia is the name of that platform um, where the three-year assessment is delivered. So that's where you'd be able to see the students that are registered to go in and update any like accommodation needs or any other needs on the student's profile. The way that you access Acacia is through the Map Growth website. So you use your same Map Growth login that you may be familiar with in the past if you've been giving the Map Growth test. Um, so that teach.mapnwa.org site. And then from here, there's going to be a link to get you through to Acacia, which we'll show in a moment. We want to make sure everyone keeps in mind that user profiles, so your own profile, any other staff that you need to create, all of that is still managed through Map Growth. So um, the same processes you've been using to add and remove user roles, to create users, to reset passwords, all of that is still going to apply for the three-year assessment and for map growth. And then this is also where the um, RIT data that comes out of the fall, winter, and spring administrations, uh, after the administration is over, we put that data back into the map growth system so that you can see those scores in the map growth reports. And then caveat for that, so in order for that data to be available in the map growth system, students must also be rostered by the SAU within map growth for each administration in order for students to have those profiles for that through your assessment RIP data to be available in. And we'll cover that um, in, in more detail later on as well. So uh, focusing on Acacia, so we wanna highlight that there's kind of three main components. There's the Acacia Manage website. That is the main page that you're gonna be spending most of your time in, um, viewing student profiles, printing test tickets, assigning accommodations as needed, all of that. Um, viewing operational reports. And then Acacia Assess is the name of the system that actually delivers the assessment to the students. And then we also have Acacia Reports. Sometimes you'll see this listed as ORS, Online Reporting Suite. And this is where you can go in and actually view student scores and get that data back from the assessment. Also, I want to mention that real-time reports will be available starting this fall. All right, so how do you actually log in to access Acacia? So um, for those of you familiar with Map Growth, you might have noticed that we have redesigned the home page over summer break. So if you're logging in for the first time in fall, it's going to look a little different. When you log in, you'll see uh, the screenshot along the right. So there will be links along the top. You'll want to click on that main through your link highlighted with the red box, and then the options on the screen will drop down. So you'll click on that main through your Acacia landing page, and that'll get you over to the Acacia system. Once again, it's the same login you've been using uh, for Map. All of the users are still gonna be managed through Map Growth. 
That page is also known as Mark, the one you're seeing here on the screenshot. And then it's uh, the same user roles are managed across both systems, but since they have slightly different capabilities and their different types of assessments, permissions will vary slightly between the two platforms. We also want to mention that um, having a missing or incorrect school state code set up in Map Growth can cause issues accessing Acacia. So we'll touch upon that too. I think most di districts took care of that in spring. And then um, once you log in, you'll see that main through your link along the top to get you through. So once you do click that through your link, this is the page you'll see. Here's the Acacia home screen. I do want to point out that um, what you see on the screen and the buttons like along the bottom will change depending on your user role and your permission. So you may not see all of these buttons. Actually, there's some that um, only us internal users will see. So just keep that in mind. I also want to mention in the top right where there's that red box, there are three buttons there. So there's the help section with the question mark. That's another great resource where a lot of our documentation or um, like roster and registration file templates and our operational report templates are there so that you can ensure you're familiar with the type of data that will be on those reports. And then we also have the little profile icon. This is where you can view your own profile and roles and you could reset your password if you need to. Um, and then there's a log out button there as well once you need to sign out if you're done for the day. So at a high level first, and then we'll go into more detail, we just wanna cover the SAU tasks to prepare for and administer the three-year assessment. So a key thing SAUs will need to do is to add any required supports or accommodations for their students who have documented needs. We'll touch upon those um, in, in depth later. This is also where you'll go into print test tickets. All students need to have credentials from their test ticket to log into the assessment. This is also where you can monitor student progress. So you can see out of the students you're testing, how far along are they, who's completed, who hasn't. Then, as I mentioned before, um, this next action is optional, but this is what would let you get your RIT scores back into the MAP growth reporting system, is importing your student roster. So the SAUs would need to do that in MAP growth, um, as has been done in prior terms and back when MAP growth was the main assessment. Then there's also data cleanup, so just making sure student profile data is accurate, all the demographics are correct. And then, of course, this is also where you can access reports um, via Acacia, so viewing student score data, and then through Map Growth if you've completed that rostering after the testing window has closed. So I want to touch upon some of the user roles for setup in Acacia. So here along the left are the different role names, and along the top are the different permissions and actions. So that district assessment coordinator role is going to have the most permissions and be able to do really all of these tasks. So they'll be able to manage users and staff, roster students on the MAP side, and then register students on the Acacia side. We'll, we'll touch upon that too. And they also have the ability to manage students in MAP, create those um, sessions and accommodations, and also view that manage online assessment dashboard. Data Administrator has a lot of similar uh, functionality, but they do not directly have the ability to, to register students or manage the dashboard. And then Proctor, really their main um, function here is just to provide the test tickets, monitor the student assessment experience, and then view that manage online assessment dashboard. And then school assessment coordinator can do a lot of these tasks as well, just not uh, managing other users or rostering students on the map side. Then moving forward to roles for actively giving the assessment. And uh, keep in mind the table has flipped a little, the roles are on the top here and the actions are along the left. So once again, district assessment coordinator has the most uh, permission to take these actions. So they can assign accommodations, um, create optional student groups, manage online testing dashboard, printing the test tickets. School assessment coordinators can do very similar things. They just don't have the ability to create those groups. And then the proctor is able to um, print test tickets. So there's no bottleneck there. Proctors can print the tickets themselves for the students that are assessing. Then also view that dashboard. And then, um, of course, actually proctor the assessment. And then something we do want to make sure is understood and highlight is that main DOE is going to be the one assigning any not test codes. So um, in the past, there was an option for like assessment coordinators to go in and assign those. That's going to be handled by the DOE. 
So I touched upon this briefly before, and I think most um, districts have corrected this, but we just want to also mention in the map growth side, making sure that the schools within your district have the correct school state code assigned is very important. If those get changed, that can cause an issue linking map growth to Acacia. So you just want to make sure that those are accurate. If you aren't sure what your codes are, or if you just want to check that they haven't changed, then you can click that link right here to go to the main DOE website and get a list of all of the codes. And then um, we just recommend everyone go in and review before and during the assessment window that these are all accurate under Modify Preferences, Modify District. And then another kind of caveat here is if you're rostering with Clever, um, that automatic rostering solution, you'll want to make sure that you do have your state code shared via Clever too, uh, since that's where it's going to be pulling that info from. So you can use that state ID field and share that with NWEA and then just make sure it matches the proper school state code. All right, so next up, we wanna talk about rostering in Acacia. So um, once again, Acacia is the actual assessment platform for the three-year assessment, and Main DOE is going to be the one rostering students into that system. So just to take Main through a year, you don't have to roster the students yourself, um, but you do still wanna go in and make sure any um, proper accommodations or accessibility tools are assigned. Students are going to be rostered to their reporting school. So that's going to be the school they actually attend and where they receive their instruction. Keep in mind that the main DOE and Synergy Neo are the source of truth for which students are rostered. So if you, if you make any updates to your local student information system, just ensure all of those changes get synced to Synergy and through to Neo. And then each weekday morning during the assessment window, the main DOE um, is uploading daily Delta roster files for any changes made in Synergy. So as long as you make the updates in Synergy, you let them sync through, then those changes should be applied the next day, the next weekday. And we mentioned this once before, so for rostering for map growth reports. So um, in order to be able to see that data back on the map growth side, SAUs, do need to roster the students to map growth, same process as you've been using in the past. So um, we do need to complete that rostering before the last day of the administration window. So before October 27th for fall, in order for that data to be available. And then of course the student state ID needs to be the same in both platforms. You wanna just be consistent and use all the same demographic information so that those profiles get connected and that the score appears in the proper place on the map side. We also do have a map growth rostering quick guide for those who aren't familiar, or if it's been a while, linked below. And this will give you some instructions on how to pull that roster and then how to import it into map growth. All right, so that covered map growth rostering. Next up, we wanna talk about the registration file in Acacia. So first of all, um, test registrations, that's essentially which tests are assigned to which student those automatically get created. So you don't have to go in and manually assign tests. That'll happen automatically as the DOE is importing the rosters. Any edits to registrations does need to be completed by SAUs. So once again, that's something like assigning an accommodation like text-to-speech, um, ordering a paper or braille form for students who need that. And then keep in mind in the registration file, uh, if you download that report so that you can make edits and import the file again, every student is going to have a separate line for each subject area. So they'll have reading and math on two separate lines. So just make sure that any accommodations you assign or changes you make are for the correct subject. And once again, that Acacia Help Center, the question mark at the top right, is going to be where you can see that template and see which columns contain which data to better understand how to make those edits. All right, so next up, we wanna talk about student groups. So students can be grouped by grade by their teacher with a group name or by assigned test administered. Essentially, there are groups for online testing. Those are kind of designed so the proctor can just pull up their group, get a list of just the students they're testing and more easily monitor those who they're actively testing. And then there's also um, reporting groups. Generally, these are created as classes um, and assigned to a teacher so that that teacher can view results and scores um, just by the, the group of students in their class. 
And then uh, for the online testing groups, one more thing is you can print test tickets by that group. So it can help save you some time with printing. It'll know who you've added and allow you to print them all at once. So a student does not have to be in the same testing and reporting group. They can be created independently and used separately. And then online testing groups are optional, but reporting groups are required so that educators are able to see student results at that classroom level. So we highly recommend people go in and get those reporting groups created so that teachers can go in and view uh, the class level data. And then as far as how to access and view those groups, so once you're logged into Acacia, there's that button along the top left that says menu you can click on and you'll see the blue um, kind of sidebar up here with different options. Once again, those options will change depending on your user role so you won't see everything. But if you have the right permission, you could go to student groups. This is where you can actually um, add the student groups to a template and import that file to create them in bulk. And then there is also options to go in and create them manually if you just wanna make a few at a time or on the fly. And then as far as going into view and edit groups, so once you click student groups, you'll see these drop downs listed here. You'll be able to choose which term, so which test administration, subject, grade, and then your organization level, so your district or your school. And then um, you'll also be able to click on the group column that appears once you've put those filters in so that you can see which groups have been created and which students are assigned. All right, I know that was a lot of information covering the platform, rostering, registration. I think I saw a few things come through the chat. So let's take a moment to answer any Q&A questions. Yeah, so Alex, I can um, share those for you. So in the Q&A, we had three questions come up. So one of them was from Map Growth. Do we need to uninstall and reinstall that browser? Um, for example, if you're giving Map Growth in grade two, and the answer provided was that you do not need to uninstall or reinstall the Map Growth browser. There's another question about the view report shortcut icon in Acacia that it is not available. So that button was not functional. And so we did remove it from the platform until it is functional in order to um, avoid some of the confusion that was resulting from that. So you will see that button again on October 2nd when the online reporting system becomes available. And then there was a question of how do we notify the DOE of NTCs? Um, there's no need to notify the DOE regarding NTCs. Parent refusal and student refusal will no longer be NTC options. And the NTCs are going to be used to determine which students should be excluded from the aggregated reports. This is because we did have to go in and remove a substantial number of NTCs from student records this, after the spring administration that were applied to tests that had been completed. Um, and so the student should have had a score and with the NTC, it would have automatically made them a non-participant and given them no score. And of course, we don't want to negatively affect your participation rates. And so we are um, managing the NTCs on our side moving forward. Great, thanks, Krista. All right, then we'll move forward now. So uh, next up, we wanna talk about accessibility. So going over the different universal tools, de designated supports and accommodations that are available and when to apply those. So as far as the different types of features, so we have uh, accommodations, which those are really only available to students who have a documented need in their IEP or 504 plan only. And then designated supports, these are determined on an individual basis for a student. And then the universal tools are available for all students. So as far as the different types of accessibility features, there are non-embedded. So these are ones that are provided locally to the student. They're not provided through the online system. So that might be something like, um, you know, physical calculator if a student has a need for that throughout the assessment um, or read aloud, things like that. And then we also have embedded accommodations or embedded features which will change the way that the assessment is provided to the student. That includes things like text-to-speech read right aloud to the student. All right, so I wanna to touch upon the universal tools that are available. So once again, these are available for all students. Uh, for non-embedded, scratch paper is permitted for students. And then uh, I'll just kind of briefly touch upon these ones here and you can see them listed. 
Um, also a great place to have a chance to see these in action or for students to be able to experience them is through that item type sampler or the student tutorial video, which covers all of these. So calculator is going to appear for particular questions that require one for the math assessment. Color contrast is available if students have uh, different visual needs and need that color contrast. Graph paper will appear on math assessments um, for questions that use it. And then the guideline is available for students. Generally, it's used for reading passages if students need help focusing on which line they're on as they read through the passage. Help videos are available as well. So there's that help icon that students can click and then it'll actually show little video clips of how these tools can be used. Then highlighter is pretty self-explanatory. You can highlight and erase highlighted text. Uh, there's the ability to navigate with the keyboard. There is notepad to type in and erase notes. And then Protractor is available for math with specific questions that use it. Then there's also a button for the reference sheets uh, for math. So uh, students can click that and view on their screen some of those formulas and things available on that reference sheet. And then Ruler will appear similar to Protractor for questions that need it. And then, of course, there's also a Zoom feature um, for students who need the text enlarged on the screen. All right, a few things we want to mention about calculator. So a calculator will not be needed for grades three through five in math. Grades six through eight in high school will have a basic scientific and or graph graphing calculator available, depending on the question. And the calculator is only going to be displayed in the toolbar for items where the calculator may be used. And then uh, for paper-based forms for grades six through eight and high school for math, a calculator is only going to be allowed on the first part of that assessment. Then moving on to the next category, we want to talk about designated supports. So these are designed to increase accessibility without altering the construct of any of the items on the assessment. Once again, it's determined on an individual basis by an educational team. And an educational team is two or more education professionals with knowledge of a student's performance. And then also any designated supports provided must be consistent with the student's normal routine during classroom instruction. So generally, we don't want to provide additional supports um, to students just for an assessment if it's not something they're used to using during their normal instruction. And then we've got some examples of the non-embedded designated supports that may be provided in person to a student. Um, these can also be viewed and edited via the student's profile and via that registration file. So even if there are non-embedded supports provided, we still want to make sure these ones listed here are tracked and documented in the student's profile. That would include things like individual or small group setting, bilingual word glossary for multilingual learners, and then any mathematical supports for the math assessment. And then there are still categories here of supports that can be provided but don't need to be tracked in the assessment platform. That includes assistive technology, medical devices, visual aids, any auditory devices, if the student reads the assessment aloud to themselves in an individual setting, or directions clarification. And then we also want to talk about um, designated support of text-to-speech that's embedded. So this is available in English only. Uh, guidance for text-to-speech and how it works and how to use it is in the accessibility guide, which is linked here below. So in order for students to have access to this, the need for the support does need to be indicated on the student's profile. That's what turns it on so that when they log in and take the assessment, they have access to it. And then keep in mind for math, all text will be read aloud to the student, uh, but for reading, reading passages will not be read. And then since we mentioned uh, the need to go in and manually assign this to a student, we wanna show how to do that. So once you're logged in to Acacia, then along the top left, you can click that menu button and you'll see those breadcrumbs along the top left. So if you go to students, search for the student and go to their profile, that's where you'll see this. Along the top right, there's those three tabs. So you would go to the accessibility supports tab. Then as you look down the screen, make sure you choose the proper term. So in this case, fall 2023. And then here's where you see the um, embedded accommodations and designated supports. So there's going to be a column for each subject. Just make sure you're applying it to the proper subject, whether it's reading or math. And then you do need to scroll down and click that green save button in order to save the change. 
as you see here, this is also where you would indicate if any paper um, assessments are needed. And we'll talk about those in a moment too. Now we wanna move on to the final category here of accommodations. So accommodations are changes in procedures or materials that are used to increase equitable access during the assessment for students with documentation of the need on their IEP or 504 plan. So some non-embedded accommodations would include things like a human reader for paper tests only. So a scribe, if there are students who do need um, somebody else to actually scribe the responses into the system for them. American Sign Language, if a calculator is needed for the entire math assessment across all questions, and then if a human reader is needed for the reading passages. And this is for students in grade six plus with a print disability for the reading assessment only. Once again, these can be viewed and edited via the student's profile, but also added to that registration file and imported to uh, be updated in bulk. And now we wanna talk about paper forms. So these are considered an embedded accommodation. These can, once again can be updated via that registration file and imported or within the student's profile. And the options would be standard print, large print and braille. So I just want to once again highlight for standard and large print, students IEP or 504 plan would require assessments to be paper-based and not administered online. The standard print forms are size 12 font and are available to be printed on demand. Then the large print uh, size 18 font and braille will need to be ordered and then we actually would ship them out to your location. So in order to request papers, uh, schools do need to go in and indicate the accommodation in the profile as we showed, but also to complete a request form before the first day of the administration window on October 2nd. So there's that second step of filling out this form. Um, so just keep that in mind. We'll show that in a moment. And there is a link right here in the PDF slides you can click. And then after students complete their paper form assessment, that proctor or scribe must transcribe the responses into the online system exactly as the student has responded. So essentially, if a student has um, a paper form identified in the online system, then that means when that test ticket is used to log in by that proctor or that scribe, they're gonna have not the online adaptive form, but the um, computer will, will mirror exactly what the paper form is. And that's where the scribe can go in and enter that information exactly how the student had. Um, provided their responses. And then because of that, we don't actually need to have the material shipped back for any materials that are shipped out. And then all paper-based materials must be destroyed on site by the last day of the window. And then just a final note that paper forms are not adaptive. All right, so that covers the accommodations and accessibility features. Taking another look at the Q&A to see if there's any other questions. Yep, so there's two questions that have come through. Um, one of them is reporting, and I know we'll get to reporting more in a moment, but it's asking about the timeline for availability of reports starting in the fall. And so in the fall uh, and moving forward for every administration onward, reports will be available in the Acacia platform within 48 to 72 hours. And reports will be available in the Map Growth platform for those SAUs who took the additional step of rostering their students in the map growth platform after the district and state cleanup windows. So that's approximately two weeks after the close of the assessment administration window. There was another question, if students regularly use multiplication charts, are they able to use them during the assessment? So multiplication charts are one type of mathematical support, which is considered a designated support. And so all designated supports have two criteria that must both be met. So a team of two or more education professionals with knowledge of the student's performance have determined that the support is appropriate for that student and the support is consistent with the student's routine instruction and assessment. So if both of those criteria are met, then it would be an appropriate designated support. Great, thanks, Krista. Yes, and I there's one more that just came in and I'll answer it now. So are the paper practice tests available to anyone 
or still considered an accommodation. So there are paper PDF item type samplers on our website, both the Maine DOE's website and the NWEA connection page. And you can gladly print those and use those with your students. If you're seeking a large print item type sampler or a braille item type sampler, those do come along with the large print or braille order. Um, but if you'd like to give a paper-based item type sampler, you can. It's just the actual assessment paper-based tests are an accommodated form that is only available to students with IEPs or 504 plans. Okay, great, we'll move forward. All right, so this is a short section. So we just wanna touch upon not test the codes one more time. So as we mentioned, NTCs are gonna be used solely by main DOE to track special circumstances where a student's assessment data will not be included in an SAU or school's aggregated data. So once again, only main DOE is going to be entering NTCs into Acacia. SAU should not enter any NTCs. And if any NTCs are ent entered by SAUs, they will be removed. So it's a pretty short section. I think we answered questions on it earlier. Just wanna give a moment if there's any other questions about NTC usage. Okay, not seeing anything else. I think that's straightforward, but feel free to keep posting questions if you have them. All right, so next up we wanna cover how to prepare for and how to actively monitor the assessment. So first up is uh, student test tickets. So they're available in two different formats for you to generate and print. So there's PDF formats, which is one per page or four per page. And then there's also an option for a CSV export. So like exporting it to an Excel spreadsheet um, that can export up to 100 student tickets at a time. That can be helpful for bulk printing or if you wanna use some of your own processes to um, format more per page or um, use like a mail merger design, the tickets to be more um, paper efficient. So you have, you have some flexibility there. And then there are two ways to access and generate and print these tickets. So under that manage online testing page, that's gonna be the option to print them in bulk. We'll show that in a moment. And you actually can go to a student's profile and under their test registration tab, you can just uh, print an individual ticket. So if you know who you need to print, you can just look them up and print right from their profile. Once again, proctors can print on demand. That way there's no bottleneck for an assessment coordinator to have to print and um, dis dis distribute them. And then um, just keep in mind, these do have some secure information. So we always consider uh, test tickets as secure materials. There's also a roster in a PDF format that's gonna show the list of which students and which tickets have been printed. So that can be handy as you're tracking your group and making sure all of the tickets have been printed. And then once again, students don't have to be in that um, online testing group in order to have a test ticket. So even if the student hasn't been manually added to groups, you can still print their ticket. As long as they have the ticket, they can log in and take the assessment. And they wanna give an example on the tickets. So um, here along the left, this is what you'll see on the manage online testing dashboard. And you'll see a list of which students are available to you. You'll be able to um, check that box to either check off everybody at once or individually choose which ones you need to print. And then you can choose to print selected or print all tickets. And there's also a button to generate the CSV. Then here in the middle and on the right, you have an example of what they look like. So it's gonna show some of the students' information as well as the three login credentials, that username, password, and session ID. That'll get them into their assessment. And then on the far right, you'll see how it's um, separated. If you choose to generate four per PDF page, then you can just cut and distribute them. So in that online testing dashboard, there's a few ways to view and monitor progress. So there um, are drop downs you can select which level you wanna view at, and we'll show that in a moment. And then you'll be able to see the different um, statuses for where students are in an assessment. So if they're ready, if they're actively in progress, if they might've run into a technical issue along the way or got disconnected, and then um, if they've submitted the assessment and then uh, void it actually uh, does not get used. All right, so we also want to touch upon um, situations where a student's test may need to be reset, reset and the policy from Maine DOE about this. 
So if there are any instances where a student's test needs to be reset, it does need to be approved by Maine DOE. And what a reset is, it's when a student is going to receive a new test ticket when they log in and it'll start them over at the beginning. So requesting a reset does mean the student would lose all of their progress and start over again from the first question. And then here are some situations where a student's assessment may need to be reset. So if the student took the assessment with the wrong ticket, so logging in as a different student and starting their assessment. If the student began or completed an assessment at the wrong grade level, if they began or completed an assessment without the proper accommodations they needed for their IEP or 504 plan, or on the flip side, if they completed an assessment with an accommodation that was not documented in their IEP or 504 plan, if their performance was affected during the assessment due to illness, and then um, after the assessment was completed, if that engagement metric in the student report shows low engagement for the assessment, that's another um, situation where you could request a reset. And then if the student's performance was affected by problems with technology or connectivity. We also wanna mention one more thing about adding text to speech after a student has already started the assessment. So what happens if a student has started and they need to have text to speech added after the fact, but they're not really in need of a full reset. So TTS can be added without main DOE approval, either before or during the assessment. The proctor should ask the student to log out of the assessment while the district or school assessment coordinator goes in, adds text to speech um, to that student's assessment and saves. Once that's been added, the student can log back in and then they will have TTS for the remainder of the assessment. We also do have a flow chart that kind of goes over the different scenarios and um, instances where a reset might apply that's available here. So as you'll see, goes over those scenarios, yes or no. So if it's yes and the student needs a, assessment, a reset to their assessment, then there is a reset request form to fill out. So that link is available here. That link's also in that flow chart. And then if the answer is no to any of those questions, then a reset would not be permitted. If you do have specific questions or a weird scenario you need to talk through, then you can reach out and contact Krista. Okay, so moving forward, we wanna talk about transferring. So we know students might move between different SAUs and different schools. Um, and there's a few ways to go in and request that transfer. So students who move out of a school must be exited from Synergy on the last date of attendance. And this must occur regardless of whether a request for records has been received for another school or not. Students who move into a school must be enrolled in Synergy by the new attending school immediately after they've been exited from the previous school. As we mentioned before, the main DOE is gonna upload that daily roster Delta file directly into Acacia to reflect those changes. And then it is the responsibility of the new school to ensure that students have the opportunity to finish incomplete portions of the assessment. So keep in mind, if a, new, if a student comes to your school or SAU and they've already started an assessment and they're partway through, then you would need to use that same test ticket for them to resume where they left off. So the new school will need to reach out to that old school, securely have that test ticket information provided um, and the student can use that to log in and resume. If the student has not yet started an assessment, the new school will just need to confirm that the testing school in that registration file has also been updated to the new attending school. That can also be done manually, can also be done manually in the management system. All right, and then um, that reset form, that link that you can click will take you to this page here. You just wanna fill out all of this information to request the reset. This is the preferred method, um, just going through and filling this form, it makes it a lot easier to track and so that the requests get sent over to the DOE. But if you need to, you can contact NWA Partner Support and support can also submit the request for you if you have the proper role and you're calling in. We did mention that testing school. So if a student moves into your uh, school or district, you wanna make sure to check their profile and make sure that that new testing school, that your location is there. So that reporting school field is going to be what populates the testing school. And just a reminder that reporting school is the school where the student attends and they receive instruction. 
The testing school can be changed if the student's taking the assessment at a location other than the reporting school. Um, just keep in mind that the reports are only going to be available at the reporting school. And then that testing school, how to get to this page, you'd go up to um, student profile, search for the student, and then click on that tests tab along the top right with that red border around it. And then um, once you click on the appropriate subject for that student, then you'll see the testing school there as the first option. Next up, we want to talk about how to do that transfer process on the map growth side. So the student transfer also needs to happen in map growth. The old SAU would go into that student's profile and just remove the current term. So they take them out of the fall 2023 term and the new SAU would roster the student as normal within map growth. In order to help maintain historical data, SAUs can also use this um, link here to submit a student transfer. So that'll make it so um, their map growth historical data from the prior SAU carries over to the new SAU and you can continue to see that historical data. And then for those using Clever to do this process, um, the old district would need to stop sharing the student as part of the regular Clever sync. That'll automatically take them out of the fall term and then the new district would be free to roster them. All right, I want to give another moment to see if there's any new questions that have come in. Yes, there is one. Um, so is there a date in which a new student from out of state comes to a main school to be exempt from testing? And I was typing this response, but I'll also just say it out loud. So if you have a newly enrolled student who comes during the last week of the assessment administration window, so this would be after October 20th for the fall, um, you are not required to assess that student if they have not previously started the assessment. So that is whether they're coming to you from another main SAU or if they're coming to you from out of state. If the student has previously started the three-year assessment, however, we do ask that you finish the assessment with them. Of course, there are cases where a student may join you on the last day of the window and you may make an attempt to finish the assessment and it may just not be possible. If you have any concerns related to that, please don't hesitate to reach out to me and we can talk through um, on an individual basis what that looks like for you. Great, thanks. Okay, so then we'll move on to regional and out-of-state programs. Actually, Actually, it looks like we're moving on to Proctor and student experience. So we'll jump right into there. All right, so we wanna cover, um, so how does it look for the student? How, what is their experience? So what they're gonna do is launch that state solution secure browser on their device with that blue icon. Then from there, they'll use their test ticket and put in those three credentials. So username, password, and session ID. After they do that and continue, uh, the student needs to just verify that it does show their name, proper grade, subject, all that information is correct while the proctor monitors um, and also confirms everyone is using their own ticket, nobody swapped tickets, everyone's logged into the right place. And then that's when the proctor can give that verbal approval to begin the assessment. So here's what it would look like. So when the student logs in, um, they'll put in their credentials here and click take test. And then here's an example, it'll show their name along the top, the subject and grade. And this is where they and the proctor just validate that they're in the right place and click next. And the student also gets a second screen with a stop sign just to make sure they don't go too far and that the proctor can confirm along that top banner, it has their name, grade and subject correctly. And then the proctor will give that verbal approval for the student to click next and begin. So while the student is in there answering questions, if they do need to step away or take a break, the best way to do that is to click that log out button at the top right. That'll save all of their progress. Um, all their progress is automatically saved after every question they answer. So they can log out and then um, take their break. When they come back in, they use that same test ticket just to log in with the same process as before, and they'll be able to resume right where they left off with that same assessment. 
Fred mentioned this before, but there's also an inactivity timer. So if it's been 14 and a half minutes since the student last interacted with the device, then they will get a pop-up appearing, um, letting them know they have 30 seconds to select OK. Otherwise, they'll automatically be logged out of the test. So they can hit OK if they were just really concentrating and need to keep moving forward, or if they were away or um, are no longer testing, they will be logged out. And they'll see that second screen here where they just have the option to click exit. And once again, to log right back in with the test ticket, and it will, again, still have saved all of their progress to that point. OK, and then once they get to the end and complete the assessment, they're going to get this uh, message on the screen. Just want to note for those of you familiar with Map Growth, it does not show the RIT score here on the screen, but you can go in and start to view um, the report and RIT score information as, as a teacher um, through Acacia. Once again, we want to talk about um, the Proctor experience. So as we showed, that Manage Online Testing dashboard is going to be where you can see how many students are in which status. And um, there's also that testing status report under operational reports we'll touch upon, which is a great way to just get an export of a spreadsheet showing how many students are ready and haven't started yet, how many are in progress, completed, et cetera. And then here's another view of what it would look like when you're actually in your group or at your list of students. So you'll see all the students listed there um, below. And then you'll be able to see their ID just to double check it's the right student. You'll see the testing statuses with the colored icons. We'll go over in just a second. You'll be able to see the school and which group that they're assigned to. And then response progress will help you see how many questions they've answered and how far along they are in the assessment. And then there also are actions there, like the printer icon will let you quickly print the ticket. And then that orange icon with the pen and paper would let you go in and make any changes to accommodations. So then we want to go over some of the statuses. So that first green one, registered, that means that the student is in the system, their profile set up, um, and they're registered. The test is just not yet available. You usually see that before the window opens. This next red one is really rare, um, so it shouldn't come up very often at all, but that usually means the student has a profile in the system, but there's still some information missing or they didn't get enrolled. So you can reach out to our support center and we can help walk you through any issue. Then that blue thumbs up, that ready to test icon, that's the one that you'll see before the student has logged in yet. So everything in the system is ready for them to log in and start taking the test. Then that yellow circle with the arrows, that means they're in progress, they're actively taking the test. Then that red exclamation mark, that means the test has either been logged out or the student might have gotten disconnected if um, the Wi-Fi dropped, if their battery died on their device. Once again, their progress gets saved, but that's a good way to notice as the proctor if you might need to go and help a student get their device logged back in. And then that green check mark means that they're complete, they've submitted the test, and since it's done, they could no longer log in with that same test again. We also want to mention there are a couple ways you can report issues if you um, or students encounter any issues or any um, concerns about the content of a test question. So uh, the main connection page, uh, there's a link right here and we'll go over that in a bit more detail too, but this is where all of our resources are and this is where you can go in to submit a support ticket. So you'd want to go to main partner support under that need help section, choose the email us option, and then you'll want to provide all of this information for us to track down which question it was for us to investigate internally and just validate. So you'll need to make sure to put in main through your problem item as a subject name, put in the student state ID, put in the grade and subject for the test, uh, put in the session name, and then the item sequence or question number. So if it was the fifth question for a student, you'd put five there. We also just want to make sure it's extra understood and well known. Um, please do not take any photos of any test questions. And even as you're submitting this request to us, um, please don't enter any details about the content of the question. As long as you fill out this information, then we'll be able to identify the question and investigate. All right, I want to take another moment before we move forward to see if any other questions have come up. Um, Alex, there was one question. It wasn't in the Q&A, but just to clarify, when you're looking um, at manuals and guides, the reason we have all of the main through your assessment manuals and guides on NWEA's website is because they have a better website 
website host than we have. And so they can maintain the same link and update the PDF. Unfortunately, MainDOE uses a website manager that doesn't allow us to do that. So if you're looking for updated things like the updated main comprehensive assessment system guidelines or the updated assessment security handbook, I always recommend that you go back to our website and click on the link for the PDF because unfortunately, each time we update a PDF, we have to create a new link. So just always go back there and you'll find the updated versions of things. Great, thanks. Okay, then next up, we wanna talk about operational reports. So these are really useful for you to track progress throughout the administration window, see how many students have completed, see what kind of paper materials you might've ordered, um, track any student moves between schools and SAUs. So we'll touch upon those. Um, so yeah, they are designed to help you monitor status of testing. So once again, once you're in Acacia, along the top left, you can click that menu button and then you'd have reports and operational reports. From here, I'll briefly touch upon the different reports and what they're used for. So the, this first one is registration report. This is a great one to download and see a list of all the students that have been rostered to your school or to your SAU, depending on the options you choose. Um, so this is essentially gonna show you the list of students that are expected to test that have been rostered by main DOE based on what was provided in Synergy and Neo. NTC usage report, this is really designed to give an export of any students that have NTCs assigned, but as we mentioned, main DOE is going to handle those. Then the summary test status report is gonna give you that summarization of testing statuses. So this one just gives you the total, so you'll see X number of students haven't started, you know, X number have completed, things like that. And then testing status report, that gives you similar information, but at the individual student and test level. So you can specifically see which students have completed which tests or which haven't started. Then student mobility report is going to show you um, kind of a list of which students that have been transferred from one school or district to another. Material orders report will help you track any paper, pencil orders or any large print or braille shipments. And then the organization report, this one's really designed to just show you which schools are um, part of your district or SAU, just for you to um, track and confirm those. And then later on, there's also the uh, student score data file listed here under operational reports. And this one's actually gonna show all valid test events for assessments completed within the administration by grade and content area. And then there's also a map growth errors report that will be available. So um, as we mentioned, there is the need to roster in map growth if you want that data to appear in the map growth reporting system. Um, and as we enable that sync near the end of the window, like we did back in spring, if there are any errors and inconsistencies between student profiles in the two systems, this is a good report to help you track those errors and make any corrections. Okay. So any questions about operational reports here? We have a question that's not necessarily operational reports, but we can answer it now. So the question is about getting reports from the spring 2023 testing. So those reports will become available in the online reporting system in Acacia on October 2nd. So on October 2nd, you will see both the view reports shortcut icon and under the menu, under reports, you'll see student scores. Both of us will both of them will take you to those reports. And then on September 28th, so the Thursday before or the Friday before, you'll have to forgive me, I don't have a calendar open, the Thursday before, you'll have access to the student score data file CSV that will include not only the RIT score information, but the through year assessment um, information as well. So you'll have the CSV on Thursday, September 28th in operational reports. And then on October 2nd, you'll have full access to all reports in the online reporting system. Great, thanks. All right. And then we're moving right on to data and reporting. Okay. So yeah, um, we did recap this a little bit, but we just want to talk about the uh, different types of reports that would be available. So we've got that student score data file. Um, that's designed to be at the state and SAU level. As we mentioned, it's gonna have all valid test events for assessments within that administration by grade and subject. Um, 
It's going to include main scale score, main scale score SEM, so standard error of measure, RIT score, RIT SEM, and achievement percentile at the course content and instructional area levels. I do wanna take a moment to mention too, as Fred pointed out earlier on, so for the fall and winter administration, uh, the assessment's gonna provide a RIT score, and then for spring is where it would provide the main scale score. So just keep that in mind. Um, anything here that mentions a main scale score, those would only be available from a spring administration, while fall and winter would just provide that RIT score. So then moving down, we've got organization level reports. So these are available by district, school, and by groups generally those classes. So they're all available on a rolling basis. The district level one has demographic filters for you to view uh, progress and achievement at certain demographic group levels. It'll also provide averages for SAU, and then they all give you that list view and histogram view. And of course, that's for district assessment coordinators and administrators. Then down to the school level, this is gonna provide averages for the school, gonna give you those visual views of student performance, for that school assessment coordinator level and administrator. And then on the group level, this is designed for instructors and anyone with permissions above that. Um, it's similar to that class level view, like in MAP growth reports. This is gonna have averages for that group. Again, you'll get visual views of student performance, and then users can create these groups and view reports with these groupings. And then finally, we have the dynamic student report. So that's the individual level student report. Again, available on a rolling basis throughout the window. It's going to have student performance in an easily printable format focused separately on each content area. So you'll have a different page for each subject. And then there is also item level information by standard item type and difficulty to let you see a little information about um, the items the student was presented and how they responded. And that's available for instructors and above. So then uh, going over the organization level reports, so for SAU and school level, so really what this is designed to offer, um, summative data by achievement level by group, school, and district. They'll have number of students tested and percentages by achievement levels, individual student achievement data for students in a specific group. Some of the questions it helps answer, how are our students doing overall? How are we performing compared to main benchmarks? What is our lowest reporting category and our highest? And then when to use it and what to consider. So of course, after testing to see the results, it's used as part of that instructional decision-making process. It's great to use when you wanna use data to help inform student grouping. Keep in mind, it'll display data from a single session, so a single administration. It can be downloaded as a PDF file and the columns can be sorted. Then moving down to that student level dynamic student report. So key info here, what this offers is student level data to help support each student's progress. It'll identify which standards students were able to successfully answer questions relating to. So that's the item level information we mentioned. Some of the questions this helps answer is, is a student on track? What are the student's relative strengths and suggested areas of focus? How can I leverage those relative strengths and areas of focus to help the student? and then when to use and what to consider so it can be downloaded and as a PDF file and printed. And then last up, we have the individual student reports. So this uh, provides student level data to help support the progress. Uh, this one, once again, will help provide how is the student performing relative to grade level expectations in reading and math? What are their relative strengths and areas of focus? And then this is uh, meant to be printed and distributed by SAUs and schools after the administration. So for spring 2023, it was delayed, but Krista gave the dates a moment ago on when you can expect that data. And that's designed to be provided to parents and families to help um, provide them student performance. So we do want to give a moment to show some visuals of these. So this is the ISR. So here you'll see how it has the um, two different scores and information relating to them. So in this case, it's showing the main scale score. So this would be like from a spring assessment. You'll be able to see um, what the student's scale score is and where they fell in that achievement level, which um, level they're in. So in this first one, you see they're in the green one at, at expectations. You'll also be able to see um, that student's score compared to the school, district, and state average. Also the instructional area scores for all of those um, areas within the subject. And then down below with math, you see the same type of information here. 
and as far as how to go in and access reports. So once again, clicking that menu button along the top left, you'll see these options here depending on your role. And then under reports, there's a student score link you can click on. Once you click that, then along the top right, once again, those tabs in the red box, you'll see the different categories. So organization would be letting you choose like SAU, district, group. And then of course we got student to go down to individual student levels. And you wanna choose these um, drop downs along the screen and then click on uh, search. Here's an example for the SAU level. So here in this case, there is a district that has um, many different schools and you'll see which achievement level the schools have fallen into. You'll also be able to see along the top which schools have, how many schools have scores. That can be handy as you're going through the administration just to see um, if all schools have been on testing. And then as you click on one of these bar graphs, you can actually drill down and see which of the schools are in that category. And then when you're looking at the school level, you see a very similar view, but instead these bar graphs are going to show how many students are at which achievement level. And you'll also be able to see the median writ there along the top. And then if you look over on the right, you'll also be able to see uh, median score comparisons. So keep in mind the main scale score is the four digit and the writ score is the three digit. And then there's also that PDF icon at the bottom right for you to generate a PDF to print. All right, and then once you um, have gone in and selected a school or group level, you'll see this information. As you scroll down, you'll start to see individual student names um, for students that are in that school or that group. So you can see how they performed. And then there's a link that'll take you directly into their dynamic student report. And then that is what this one is here. So in this case, um, we've selected a student. We're looking at their reading report. Along the top left, you can see their main scale score in reading. And then along the top with the colored bars, you can see which um, achievement level they have placed in. And then below that, you'll see the instructional area writ scores as well. And then looking down um, is where you'll see the item response information. So you can actually see which standards the student was able um, to answer questions on and if it was correct or incorrect to try to help inform some information on which standards the student is familiar with and also being able to see item difficulty. And then once again, just noting that the main scale score is only available in the spring assessment. Otherwise, you'll see writ information on these reports. All right, and then next up, we wanna talk about when reports are gonna be available for this academic year. So as we mentioned before, operational reports are available all throughout the window. Um, the only exceptions is the student score data file becomes available after the state data cleanup window. So after the admin has ended, there are a few cleanup windows for district and state to go in and just make sure all their data is accurate. And then that map growth roster error report becomes available after the last day of the admin for you to go in and make any corrections there. Then in general, data and reporting in Acacia is available within 48 hours from when assessment is completed. So generally like with map, you'd see it in the next day, uh, but it can be up to 48 hours. And then, as we mentioned before, so um, RIT data from through year being available back in map growth reports, that is after the assessment window has closed and that map growth sync has been turned on. So you need to make sure that students are rostered on the map side and that sync um, is active and successful. All right, and then next up, we wanna talk about some preparation here. Yeah, Actually. this is me, okay. Alex. I Great, think thanks. It's kind of, over. Yeah. Um, so first, here's some. Well, I have preparation. I have resources. I don't have preparation. Um, that's all right. Um, so first off, for preparation, we we recommend that you review the technical requirements for the for the main three year assessment. Again, kind of what we talked about earlier in the session. Um, uninstalling and reinstalling the new um, state secure browser. Um. We recommend that you review the, the DOE guidelines for accessibility and identifying students that need specific accommodations or supports. Uh, we, we recommend reviewing the scheduling guidance um, from the main DOE, as well as reviewing the, the DOE assessment uh, security handbook. All right. Oh, okay. 
Uh, so here's some resources. So resources, all these resources that, that are listed below are, are available on the main connections page, kind of what um, Krista referred to earlier. Um, we've got the, the assessment checklist. We've got the coordinator guide. We've got the user and student management guide and the accessibility guide. Um, again, for educators, um, again, also the item type sampler that can be ordered online or, or via paper. Um, you've also got the online student tutorial. Um, and last but not least, this will be a late edition um, coming um, in late September. It'll be the, the reports interpretation guide. And then for proctors, we also have the administration guide and the manage online testing guide. Uh, these are two additional resources for technology and security. Uh, one is the NWA State Solution System and, and Technology Guide, um, as well as the, the Assessment Security Handbook. Um, again, both of those are, are good documents to look at for any questions you may have prior to testing. Um, suggestions for a smooth assessment experience. Um, enable audio devices, um, um, audio on devices used for TTS and provide headphones. Ensure that all students have the appropriate accessibility features assigned appropriately. Um, validate school proctor roles have been assigned in MARC. Um, that's the Map Growth Platform. Use the Manage Online Testing Dashboard to monitor testing progress through the window. Again, those are your operational reports. And just a reminder, refresh the dashboard um, to see updated information um, on those reports. Uh, troubleshooting tips. Um, obviously, if you're in Acacia, um, the student, the student's answers are going to get saved after after every question. Um, if a student runs into issues, you know, first have the student log out, um, then log back in with that same information on their test ticket. Um, should that not work, second step would be to do a full reboot of their computer, then have them log back in. Again, the proctor does not need to, to do anything. The student just needs to log in with the information that's available on their test ticket. If steps one and two um, are not successful, then please uh, reach out to NWA Partner Support at 855-430-1777. All right, communication and partner support. Um, first and foremost, if you have any policy questions, uh, please contact Krista at the, at the DOE. We provided her email as well as her phone number. And then additional information materials can be located on the DOE website, and we provided that link to you as well. Uh, next slide gets us to the information for NWA partner support. Um, again, there's their phone number. Those are the hours of operation. Um, again, available Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then again, there's also a link to the connections page um, where you can reach, we can reach out to them as well. Um, here's some very important dates for fall 23. Again, obviously the management system opened up um, on the 28th of last month. Districts can be, begin rostering their students in map growth, um, begin management activities in Acacia. Paper-based accommodations can start to be requested. Um, they must be, those paper-based accommodation forms must be requested prior to the admin starting on October the 2nd. Uh, the fall window runs through October the 2nd through the 27th. Um, students enrolled after October 19th are not required to assess. And then November 3rd will be the last day to update support and, or accommodations and fix map growth rostering errors. And that is it. So now we'll kind of open the floor for any questions that anybody in the field may have. So Fred, there's a few in the Q&A that I'll just uh, highlight right now. Okay. So there was a request to reiterate um, when scores will become available for the fall administration and all future administrations. So starting in the fall, results in Acacia will be available within 48 to 72 hours. And for those SAUs who roster their students in the MAP Growth platform, results will be available in MAP Growth reports, specifically RIT score results after the close of the district and state data cleanup windows, which is about two weeks after the assessment administration window closes. There was a question regarding the timeline for availability of RIT scores. So regardless of whether or not your student double tested, quote unquote, or took main through year assessment and map growth in the spring, or just the main through year assessment, um, 
RIT scores have been available for those students who took only the main through year assessment since mid-July uh, in a preliminary student score data file, which is a CSV file in operational reports. The instructional area RIT scores will become available on October 2nd, however, when all of the remaining student score data becomes available. If you need help accessing that preliminary student score data file, just reach out to me or the partner support as well, and we can help you um, locate that file. And then there was a question, will Acacia reports show a state percentile, not a nationwide percentile? So just to clarify, the reports in Acacia will show both your RIT score and your main specific skilled score. RIT scores are still associated with national achievement and growth percentiles as in the past. We do not report a percentile for the main specific skilled score, but we do report state SAU and school averages. Any additional questions, anyone? That feel free to type them in the in the Q and A. You can also come off mute. <laughs> I, I had a question as far as the Acacia and in map reporting. So, if I have my students all in the map growth roster and map growth, do I need to get them in Acacia as well? So rostering in Acacia is done by the state. If your students are not currently in Acacia, it's likely that they were not in Synergy as of 8 p.m. yesterday evening. Um, if you just got them in Synergy today, they'll be in the daily change file that's uploaded tomorrow. So it's all dependent on SAUs uploading their students into Synergy. Okay, thank you. Is there going to be any data analysis or how to read the data trainings put on or just um, I had seen that there probably will be some handouts posted? Yeah, so the professional learning team, which is separate from the individuals hosting this session, um, do have some upcoming introduction to reports sessions. I will make sure um, in the Q&A that we get the link to that in there, but also while Alex answers the question about instructional area scores in math growth reports, I will find that link to the PL flyer right now and put it in the comments so that um, you all have it and you have the links to sign up for those sessions. So Alex, the, the question is to clarify, instructional area scores will show up in MAP reports for the main through year assessment on October the 2nd. Um, so Susanna, are you, are you referring to the, like all the reports from the spring, from spring 23 in, in MARC in, in MAP growth platform? Yes, we can see the RIT scores, but we can't see the instructional area. Yeah, that'll that'll be October the second. Okay. Yeah, Thank so you. they will also be available in map reports. Yep. So should I be going to Acacia or should I be going to the map reports to get student data? That depends largely on the student data you're seeking. Mm -hmm. So if you are seeking the main specific skilled score and the associated achievement level of well below, below, at, or above state expectations. Acacia is the only place you're going to see that. Okay. Yep. If you are looking for RIT score information, honestly, I feel like map growth reports have more depth to them than the reports in Acacia, but they will appear in both places. Great, thank you. Any other questions, anyone? All right, well, thank you again so much for joining. Um, eventually, the Q&A um, from this, as well as the, the previous session that occurred on the 7th, will be, the, the Q&A questions will be combined along with the answers. 
um, the deck and a recording, uh, probably the recording for this training itself, will be also be posted on the main connections page. So if you feel like you need to go back and, and get a refresher from watching the video, um, you'll you'll have that available to you. And the deck is already posted. Correct. Correct. Um, if there's not any questions, again, thank you so much for your time. Um, we look forward to a very successful um, main uh, three-year assessment this fall. And again, feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions. Thank you all very much and hope everyone has a nice day. Thanks for joining us.